This is the recording for July the 14th, 2024. During our worship service, we will sing, In Christ, there is no east or west, and him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. Then we will also sing the hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. And a third hymn, We Have Come to Join in Worship. And the fourth and final hymn at the end of the service will be the servant song. Brother, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. It has four stanzas, great song. Reminds us of who we are and what we're supposed to be doing in the fellowship of Christ. Then we will read four scripture readings throughout the service. Acts chapter 2, 32 to 47. Romans 12, 3 to 13. Revelation 22, 12 to 21 and 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 17. The topic is the fellowship of Jesus Christ. And the, the verse, I'll read these verses to you, beginning with verse 9. I said 1 Corinthians 1, 10 to 17, but I will reference the, fault, the previous verse in verse 9. So here's how it reads in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning verse 9. God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful, called you into the fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that there be no more divisions among you, that you may not be, that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this, one of you says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Apollos, another, I follow Cephas, still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? I am thankful that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so no one can say that you were baptized into my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anybody else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Let's pray. Lord, we've read your word. We ask that the Holy Spirit will open our minds and hearts, that we can understand what it means for us and how we should apply it, that we may be more pleasing in your sight as we serve you in our generation. So send the Holy Spirit among us to work your divine pleasure. This will be good, we know, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 9 said, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. The fellowship of his son. The fellowship indicates you are not alone, but joined with many others into a people belonging to Jesus Christ. To have a fellowship, you have to have fellows. No man by himself has fellowship. And so, the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, is what he's after and what he creates, God creates, when he makes Christians and brings them together in the church. 1 John 1, 7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from every sin. Clearly, there is a other that's in, that is in picture here, fellowship with one another. God places us into the fellowship of believers called the church, where we are to be earnestly contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. We are not lone wolf believers who walk through this world alone until we get to heaven. When we embrace Jesus as our Lord and Master, we enter into the fellowship that forms at his feet. And in this text about to be unfolded, verses 10 to 17, 
Paul gives three essential questions regarding what it means to be in fellowship, the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. What does that mean? And so the first question he uses to illuminate what that means is, is Christ divided? Was Jesus given out to you piecemeal so that each of you got a little piece and some pieces are bigger than others? He says, Jesus is not divided. He's not divided among you and each shares equally in the fellowship at his feet. This fact will be further elucidated in a crucial argument in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. We'll get to that, God willing, in the months ahead. That all who rely on Christ for salvation are equally acceptable to God. The, the fellowship does not have levels of fellowship. It's one body. For there are varieties of gifts, he will say in chapter 12 but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities among believers, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. Because this is a fact, we cannot make false distinctions between believers. All matters and all that matters is faith that expresses itself through love. Galatians 5, verse 6, the second part of the, of the verse. All that matters is faith that expresses itself in love. We say the Apostles' Creed often in our churches, and we should. It's at least 1,500 years old. And in the Creed we say, I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, what is the communion of saints? The Apostles' Creed refers to the communion of saints in reference to all believers, past and present, who share in the salvation in Jesus Christ. That's what the communion of the saints is. That is also the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ. All believers, past and present, who share in salvation in Jesus Christ. This includes deceased Christians who live with Christ today and those still alive today as you and I are now and those who are yet to put their faith in Christ, those yet to come. We're all one communion, one fellowship. This affirms one salvation as Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 and Acts 4, 12 says, there's only one name under heaven whereby we must be saved. And that applies to all people in all ages. When we gather in worship, we praise God with believers we cannot see. Isn't that a wonder too? We experience the community of believers, living and dead, stretching beyond space and time. Believers who came before us and believers who will yet be born. We believe that the church is the communion of saints. It is the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ, into which we are born again and we become the children of God with our brothers and sisters. We are united with Christ Jesus by relying on him completely to reconcile us to God and all are one body with him as the head. We cannot say, I am better, a better follower of Jesus because I was taught by Paul. Or I'm better because I was taught by Apollos. I was taught by Peter. I was taught by Calvin. I was taught by Luther or Wesley or whoever. These are mere mortals who themselves preach Christ alone is the Son of God and Lord of all. The only name among men whereby we must be saved. They were These men, all of them, were in complete agreement of the place of Christ and on their place at his feet as sinners saved by grace alone. So Paul says, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? Who is Peter? We are just errand boys telling the good news about Jesus. We are ambassadors. We are not the government. We are not the head. We are ambassadors speaking for Christ. 
So the fellowship that he says in verse 9 that we are called to includes those who trust in Jesus alone. And he asked the question, is, is Christ divided? The answer, of course, is no. There's only one true fellowship of the church. Second question he asked that demonstrates what the meaning of the fellowship of his son is, was Paul crucified for you? So the first question, is Christ divided? Second question, was Paul crucified for you? Just a little reflection tells us it wasn't any human teacher who suffered and died in agony to take away sin. Only the once-for-all sacrifice of Jesus atones for our sins and reconciles us to God completely. You cannot form a competing fellowship to the one fellowship with Jesus Christ. can't be done. Who is the head? Jesus Christ. Paul, Apollos, and Peter were not crucified for you, he is rhetorically saying. Don't treat them like they were. Allegiance is due to Jesus alone from all those who are in the fellowship. Just a little reflection tells us why no mere mortal can be crucified for you. Each must pay for his own sin. No one can carry yours too. Only Jesus, the infinite Son of God, of infinite worth, could earn heaven for us with his perfect loving obedience to God and further giving his life as a ransom for many because his life had no sin. You can't die for somebody else. Nobody else can die for you. They must die for their own sin. He alone is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. All those who are divided into their own sex in the SECTS and Corinthians must realize that there is only one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called. In Ephesians he says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Christ alone is due our allegiance because he alone was crucified for our salvation. And that then is the second question, rhetorical question, that gives us that answer. What it means to be in the fellowship of his dear son is that we give all allegiance to the one who was crucified for us. And we owe him all of this allegiance. A third question that he asks which helps explain what it means to be in the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. The question is, into whose name were you baptized? Of course, they and we and every Christian that's ever been a true Christian was baptized upon the authority of Jesus into his name, which means into his person and his work, into his infinite worth. His point is that point is that they were buried with Jesus in baptism. They rose again from the dead in Jesus. They sit at the right hand of God already in Jesus, our Savior. It was by his blood that their sins were washed away. It's by his resurrection that we have a resurrection of our own. Being baptized into Christ means they dedicated themselves, body and soul, to be in fellowship with Christ. He says, remember who you are. Remember all who were baptized into Christ, who publicly declared their allegiance to Jesus, who are equal members of the fellowship with Jesus Christ. And stop your factions that are destroying the fellowship of the Christ, which fellowship is the church, the gathered people of God. Roman soldiers swore allegiance to Caesar. When they did, they became the property of Caesar to command as he will. Our baptism into Christ means that we are the property of Jesus, our King, and gladly trust him with all that we are and all that we have. The worship of the early Christians revealed their allegiance to Jesus that they knew in whose name they were baptized. 
that worship of the early Christians is revealed in their prayers, with prayer being the highest form of worship. They prayed to and in the name of Jesus. In verse 2 of the first chapter, Paul says he's writing to those sanctified in Christ, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. This is prayer to and adoration of Jesus Christ. In Acts 2, Peter declares in his sermon on Pentecost, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he said the name of the Lord is Jesus. He said this, God has made this Jesus Christ, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Praying to Jesus is what made them Christians, Christians. Directing all prayer to God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ makes them Christians. Paul heard his first prayer to Jesus during the stoning of Stephen when he stood by holding the gowns and the coats of those who were throwing the rocks and killing Stephen. He heard Stephen say, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And on the road to Damascus, when Jesus confronted Paul, Paul prays his first prayer to Jesus and calls him Lord. Revelation 22, 12-21 gives the final words of Holy Scripture. And in those last two, two, chap, two verses of, ch of chapter 22, it says, Lord Jesus, come quickly. And then follows an invocation. The grace of the Lord Jesus be upon all who believe. The Bible ends with prayer to Jesus. All those in fellowship, the fellowship of his son, pray to Jesus. In Corinth, Christians no longer called upon Aphrodite or Apollo, but rather they worshipped Jesus Christ and called upon him. He was not just another god in the pantheon of gods. He is very God, a very God, and all others were pretenders. The church through the ages has always directed prayers to God through the merits and person of Jesus Christ and always confessed to Jesus as God is worthy of direct prayers. We are not the disciples of Paul, Apollos, or Peter. We are the disciples of Jesus alone. When Paul says, Was Paul crucified for you? Into whose name were you baptized? He is reminding them that their worship is to be solely focused on Christ and their acceptance of each other is as men and women who worship Christ alone. Focus on Christ. All glory goes to him. He alone is all sufficient and worthy of worship. In his fellowship, there is no division by the standards of men. There are three essential questions that grow out of this statement. In verse 9, you are called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This fellowship is maintained when we answer three questions. Is Christ divided? No, we all have him equally. Was Paul crucified for you? Only the Lord Jesus was crucified for us. And into whose name were you baptized? Only in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. So let us remember this exhortation when we want to be divided or special, I am of Calvin, I am of Luther, I am of whoever. No, you are of Jesus Christ, and that's the most important thing. Let us pray. Our Father, we terribly underestimate what it does when we divide ourselves according to the traditions of men. Give us the Holy Spirit to wean us from that childishness that we should embrace everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus in sincerity. For they are family. They are the fellowship that we belong to. God, thank you for forgiving our sins through the blood of Christ. Teach us to love him more than life itself. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope to see you in church sometime soon. 
Certainly this information, this sermon goes out to many who are homebound, especially some friends who are down in Florida. And um, just love that you send the messages, little notes, just about every week. Friends in Mississippi, friends in Georgia, thank you for your communications. Now go in peace, make peace, and be a part of the great family of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maintain that fellowship. Strive to maintain that unity in him, letting things that are small matters go. As long as they trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone, they are family. See you next week, God willing, and hopefully Jesus will come back first.